Hello, welcome to the DFSS planning cycle training. This training is intended for the Citywide Parent Policy Council of the Chicago Department of Family and Sports Services Head Start Grants. This is the third and last part of a three-part training. You can watch all the trainings or just the trainings you are interested in. The planning cycle training is three parts. One, overview uh, of the planning cycle and community needs assessment. Two, the self-assessment. And three, monitoring and program goals. This training is the monitoring and program goals. In this training, we want to share how the self-assessment fits into the monitoring cycle and how the monitoring cycle in turn fits into planning. Program monitoring is ongoing, but there are th three, three key events during the year. A winter agency staffing, a spring agency staffing, and the agency roundtable in the late spring or early summer. Staffings happen internally at DFSS when the program monitors formally review agency data and monitoring reports to get a reading on performance and determine if there are any issues or concerns that need to be addressed immediately with training technical assistance. So you can see ongoing monitoring is happening. Then there's a winter staffing when the team of monitors for a particular agency debriefs about that agency, followed by more ongoing monitoring and additional resources for any agencies that might need them a spring staffing in which the team comes together again internally at DFSS to discuss that agency's performance, and then the round table when the agency comes in. The annual round table occurs in the late spring or early summer. There are two weeks prior to the round table, the agency is given a notice. It's typically a half day session. It's the conclusion to the program year monitoring. So it's the end of the cycle. Typically it's scheduled in late spring, early summer. It's going to occur this year, I believe starting June 15th. The round table agenda. Agency and DFSS staff come together to discuss an agency's performance, strengths and challenges and areas for improvement. That is the topic of conversation at a roundtable. Both DFSS monitoring reports and agency self-assessments are critical to roundtables because essentially the discussion is coming to an agreement about the status of last year's improvement goals and what the program priorities for improvement should be for the coming year. And those improvements for the coming year, program priorities get expressed in an action plan or an improvement plan for the coming year. So here we have the round table. The grantee brings its monitoring reports, data reports, last year's grant applications and program plans for the agency, last year's uh, action plan. And the agency will bring its self-assessment, its own interpretation of its strengths and challenges, any internal monitoring or even external monitoring data reports it has, <clears throat> and it too should review the grant application beforehand for its program goals and objectives and the program plans it was working on in the previous program year. So out of the action plan, or out of the round table, excuse me, comes the action plan. The action plan is three to five agreed upon priority areas, which are written into the plan. And they're agreed upon between the DFSS monitoring team and the agency's leadership, so the delegate agency's leadership. The action plan describes the supports that are needed to implement it, the resources that are available to implement it and achieve it. And a draft copy is submitted to the team supervisor, that is the monitoring supervisor, about a week after the roundtable session. 
this is what the action plan typically looks like, although right now we're revising it in order to make it a drop down um, type of form. You can see that there's a priority area. We quote relative Head Start performance standards. We provide a rationale for it. There's a goal, there's an outcome. And then we have the objectives, tasks, and activities that need to be performed, expected challenges, and anticipated date for completion. So this form is something that after the round table, the agency goes back discusses with its stakeholders, completes a draft, and resubmits to DFSS's monitoring team. So the final approved action plan, so once the, the agency submits the action plan to DFSS, DFSS reviews and approves, it goes back to the agency and the agency gets it approved with its self-assessment by its board and by its policy committee and it's submitted again typically with the grant application if you have head start funding um, otherwise it's submitted separately if you have only pfa pi fund funding that due date is typically uh, determined either by the grants team for head start or by um, the monitoring team for PFA PI. So here's another way of visualizing the planning cycle. If you remember, we started off with a different kind of model, but this is kind of looking through the planning cycle um, in terms of communicating goals and revising goals. So you can see how it goes from the community assessment through the action plan, the implementation of the action plan. At six o'clock, when it keeps monitoring to seeing how improvements are being made, it, uh, tracking the implementation of the action plan. The self-assessment is a more uh, formal, an informal, formal sitting down, doing a check on how the action plan is being implemented. And then it gets reviewed again and the cycle starts all over. At the end of the monitoring cycle or the planning cycle, one ends up with program goals. So the year begins with program goals and action plan. The budget is developed that reflects those goals. The budget for ongoing operations, that would be staff, space, et cetera, um, is included in the budget, but it also might be responsive to the action plan goals. It might include additional training, a supplemental curriculum, some sort of supplies. It really is dependent on that action plan and what is determined is needed. And of course, what kind of funding one has available. Ongoing monitoring tracks uh, progress on goals. And so does the self-assessment, which we already discussed. Finally, uh, there's this annual review where we look at the community assessment, we see if anything has changed. That's the annual update. And whether or not that community assessment might impact program needs of children and families. And certainly you can anticipate that this year there will be some updating to the community needs assessment that has some information about COVID-19 because we know that that has been affecting everyone across the city of Chicago, if not the country and the world. The thing to remember about goals, which come out of uh, this uh, review, year round review, and maybe get revised in the coming um, Head, uh, Head Start grant application or in the action plan is that they can come from anywhere. And just wanted to really illustrate that here. It may be something that comes out of a change in the community assessment. It may be in something that the agency has discovered in its self-assessment. It may be something that DFSS or an external monitor has noticed that needs to be changed. It may be that there's uh, some compliance issues that are ongoing. It may be that the organization is trying to move in a certain direction, and so it, it's, it, program goals align with their organizational strategic planning. It may be that there are new discoveries and research and child development that need to be expressed in program goals and other things. 
So as I said, for this year, I think we can anticipate that there will be some uh, developments that are related to the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, I also know for DFSS on our side, one thing we're gonna have to check in on is we had a series of quips and caps, which you are all aware of, um, that had to do with uh, child health and safety that um, we'll have to check in on and see what kinds of program goals need to be um, revised for the coming year to ensure that safety measures and training of staff and things like that are in place and are robust in the coming year. So I want to say the program goals uh, for Head Start especially, the Head Start is on a five-year cycle and now we're kind of bleeding into the grant application training. Uh, a Head Start grant is on a five-year cycle. So for that first year, which typically comes right after the comprehensive community needs assessment, the uh, organization, whether it's the grantee or the delegate agency, um, creates five-year goals. And these are our DFSS's citywide five-year goals that aligned with the RFP that we did. The first one, was to ensure that the continuity of care, or sometimes it's called continuity of relationships model, was implemented across programs for zero to three-year-olds. About half of our programs, I think, had zero to three continuity of care, which is when the same cohort of children and teaching staff move up or loop together through, um, through the, the, the one to five years they're together um, at a center. Um, so that was our first one. We know that this is a great goal that has great outcomes for children's social emotional development. It also helps retain teachers and it helps improve their practices. Our second goal was to improve the family engagement system across all of our early learning programs, especially by reducing the caseload for family service workers and increasing their staff credentials. So that's the other thing that we want to see take place over the next five years. Um, the third goal that we had for the, the, these five years were to implement quality improvement in staff compensation, credentials, and access to ongoing professional development. And this was really trying to address some of the teacher turnover and teacher shortages we have, but also trying to raise um, salaries in the city of Chicago so they would be more on par with uh, the public school system. And this is the logic model we have for our program goals. Um, a logic model is uh, basically a model that shows how what one's hypotheses are for program goals, what one's model of change is, um, and so you can hear, see here, um, these are how the three goals get expressed in the logic model. Okay, there's a pro problem statement at top, which is there is a gap in school readiness. There's a goal, which is to increase the school readiness of the children in our programs across developmental domains. And then what you can see when you look from uh, left to right are the three kind of work streams we put together. The first work stream aligns with goal one, which is including the continuity of relationships. We put in certain resources, we conduct certain activities, we want certain outputs, new policies related, implemented and related to uh, continuity of relationships, and then we see we want to see certain outcomes, short-term, intermediate, and long-term. So the first, um, the top line sort of represents that first work stream program goal. The second um, represents the second work stream uh, along the family and community engagement systems. And the third one, uh, oh, they're flipped, I'm sorry. The second one on this model is about improving teacher credentials and staff compensation. And the third one is the family engagement. And so the rationale for why uh, we think that the, these um, policy changes are going to um, lead to positive outcomes and better school readiness, um, those rationales are there at the bottom. 
So as I said earlier, the, the program goals um, get expressed in the grant application. The goals, outputs, outcomes are communicated to the funder via the grant application. And then the funder will come back and monitor us, DFSS, citywide on it. And just as how we, in that monitoring cycle, DFSS monitors the agencies against their own action plans and their um, quality improvement plans and the like. So when the grant application goes out, it has both the program goals it includes annual progress on long and short term goals and course corrections. So we have a separate training model you can view about the annual Head Start grant application that is available on YouTube as well. And we recommend um, that for more information about the grant application, that you turn to that uh, training module. So my name is Beth Stover. Uh, here's how you can contact me if you have questions about this uh, training. And these are the team members that I have with me, Tasha Smith, who helps with the self-assessment, and as you know, the CPPC, and Madeline Shea, who's our uh, grants specialist, um, who helps work on the Head Start grant. Um, so please reach out if you have questions, and uh, we will be more than happy to answer them. Thank you, and have a great day.